Hello, how are you guys doing? It is a wonderful Tuesday here in California, Southern California. It is mm, cloudy, rained a little bit this morning. I would like some more rain, but that's, you know, not that's not up to me. But Hopefully you are here because you want to learn how to use the iPad, specifically for me, for Bible study. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I've got quite a few things to go over and I wanna make sure I don't go over an hour today since that's what I seem to be doing lately. So I'll give you a little bit of a background. I have the iPad because I need it for when I am out and I've done a couple of Sojourner shows and so I needed the iPad so that I can use it for making charges on Square and all of that. So I needed the iPad and also I wanted to get into using Procreate just for fun. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure some of you have seen our thank you card that we send per order. It's a stack of Sojourners and I think on the top it says hello, right? Well, that's actually my drawing and it is done on the iPad with Procreate for illustration. And it's really fun to use. However, after I did that piece and also the matcha sticker, I kind of got away from doing any more of those because I got busy and really I don't know a whole lot about Procreate. I just knew what I needed to do and I did that. And so it was just fun. But I think I'm probably going to do a couple more of those designs sometime soon. My iPad actually has been sitting dormant for a little while as far as doing things that are productive necessarily. So I was watching some sometimes YouTube on it, sometimes Netflix and things like that. So I wasn't really using it for its potential. And so when I started doing the Bible study and digging deeper once again in, in studies in the Bible, I decided that I'm going to start using the iPad just because it's so much easier. There's a lot of reference books that I have that I want to use when I'm studying the word and it's just so much easier when it's on the iPad. I am not replacing any of my paper things as far as the Bible. I still use my Bible that is a paper Bible and I still make my markings on there. But typically what I do with that is I, I will use it when I'm at home. Okay, so I use it at home and that's the same thing with my journals or my um, verse mapping, which I'm using this book for. You guys have seen it last week. Anyway, I do use it here at home if I'm at home. So I still love paper, of course. I will never not love paper. I grew up writing on paper and as a graphic designer, paper was a huge thing for me. And so paper will never leave my life. However, like I said, for the Bible stuff, a lot of it I'm starting to kind of use and use the tools in iPad. That's why I wanted to share this with you guys. So it's an option. And if it's something that you might want to look into, I think for me, especially because I'm always on the go, I need something more compact. Like I said, I cannot take all my reference books. And so this works perfectly for me because it's big enough where I could write and it just fits in my bag. And especially when I'm traveling, this is going to help me a lot. As far as journaling is concerned, I really still really like paper. I, I'm always, I'm still journaling in paper. I cannot see myself journaling on the iPad, except for maybe some quick notes, some quick journaling. Let's say I was at a coffee shop, I wanted to journal, but I didn't for some reason, which doesn't really happen, but I let's just for some reason I didn't have my journal. I can journal it in here, and what I can do then is then I can export it, print it, and then put it within the pages of my journals. And so that's a cool feature too. And in fact, that is something that I did for some of these pages, like this one here. I did this on the computer because I was doing it while I'm out and I ended up just printing it at work and then pasting it onto my notebook because I like hard copies. Anyway, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So first of all, tools and supplies. I'm gonna go over that real quick. There are certain iPads versions that you can now use the pencil. There are two types of pencils. There is the number one and the number two. So you really kind of need to know which one, which iPad version that you have to be able to work 
with the particular pens. So you can't just purchase a pen and then go and, and try it on your iPad. There's some versions of the iPad it won't work in. So I'm just gonna give you a list of what I saw on Google, okay? I am not an expert in any of these things. I'm just sharing with you guys what little bit I know for any of this. So on the tools, as far as the iPad, it says online that you can use it for the iPad Air 3, iPad Mini 5, those work with a first generation pencil. And it says, while 2018 iPad Pro works with a second generation pencils. So this is a second generation pencil because I have the iPad Pro 11 inch, okay? And the software is updated to 13.3. And if you don't know where to look that up, you can go here in settings. And right here, you just go to about and then you can see it here, model number, um, model name, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we'll go back. Let me, um, I'm gonna have to adjust the camera here because I'm seeing that the notes might cover some things. So let me just adjust a few things right now. If you need to know the iPad that you have, if it's compatible, just Google it. See if it'll work with whatever pencil that you can purchase okay and also i wanted to show you i also have this which is a keyboard and it's a very thin keyboard as you can see and let me compare that with a pencil it's very thin i love this keyboard it is by logitech and it's called keys to go and now they actually have them in some fun colors Okay, so I do have the second generation pencil. That's what works with this. The first generation will not work with this iPad. So first of all, you will need a copy of the Bible as a PDF file, okay? And I have found a company that now carries them and I think it was just released this December. So that's really super cool. So you want to go to crossway.com. I'm running through this with you guys. Okay, you can do this on your own. So in here, I'm just uh, going to show you where it's at right here. Okay, it only comes with the ESV digital scripture journal is what it's called. It only comes in the ESV version. You can also use this to Bible journal in. They have the PDF where you can Bible journal with this particular app or PDF file, okay? So you wanna go there and basically follow the prompts, okay? I'm not gonna do it because I've already downloaded it and I don't wanna download it again. You can download the Book of Romans if you wanna just test it out, okay? So look it up on crossway.org, but I know that in here it had said that there's a 50% discount if you sign up to basically receive emails. And to be honest, I, I did this, what, about a week, two weeks ago, and I've not received one email from them. So that's really good. So hopefully they'll still honor that. You can always email them and see if that's something that you can still get. What happens is after you make the purchase, okay, they will send you an email. And in the email, it will contain the file that is the PDF file. And so you want to import that in so that you can get it into an app, which I will show you. The app that I'm using is called GoodNotes, okay? You can also use iBooks from what I understand, but I'm sure it's limited as far as what you can do with it. There are other different apps GoodNotes is not the only one, so you might want to do research on it. So I chose GoodNotes because it's an easy one to use. And also within the Crossway page, it'll also give you the different apps that you can use that works well with this app, okay? Just so that you guys know. So now that we've got that squared away, hopefully. So you would need to download that. You need to download, again, GoodNotes or another app, and then you have to import it in. So I'm gonna be speaking about GoodNotes. In GoodNotes, it imported it in here. Again, it has to be a PDF file. So it had imported in here, and this is what it 
well, that's not what it said. I changed the wording, but basically it's the Bible. Okay. So you click on that. These are some notes that I did. So let's just go over to, oh, right here. Do you see this? It's like four squares. Okay. If you go there, if you hit that, what it does is it gives you a page that shows all the thumbnails of the scripture, chapters, etc., etc. Okay. So if you press on that, you can see that is a chapter. And I love that this is double lined so that you can actually do the inductive study on here much easier and you don't have to make the double lines yourself. Well, you can't anyway on a PDF file. So I love that it's already like that. So for those who like to study inductively or to write within the Bible text, it's cool, right? And that's the whole reason I'm showing you this is because I write in the text. So We'll go back there, and at the very bottom, you can add pages. So some of these are the pages that I've added already with notes and things like that. So let me give you an example. I did that, but I really want to move these away from the actual PDF of the Bible because I want to make a different folder for it. I just haven't organized it. I will show you how to do this too, to get scripture in here, in those pages. But anyway, so I'm showing you the Bible right now, and I'm going to go show you through these icons here, okay? When you press on this, these four squares, right, it'll give you the thumbnail view, so you could look up the different Bible verses or, or Bible books. And it's a little hard and I'll show you, there's a workaround to this because you don't know where it starts, right? Like you don't know where Revelation starts and where it ends. So what you want to do is you want to go over here where it says outlines. Okay. Under outlines, it will show you the outline of the Bible. As far as Genesis, Exodus, these are the different books. Okay. So let's say we're going to study something and we're going to study something in James. So you just pick James. And then see how it goes from chapter chapter one. Well, James has a lot of chapters. And so you literally have to scroll through this to get to all the different chapters, right? Actually, it doesn't have a lot of chapters. I'm thinking of John. Because there's a lot of, let's say there's a lot of chapters in here. And to try to find chapter two, um, the best way to do it that I've found, if you guys figure this out and there's a better workaround, please let me know. The way I do it is I go here and then I go over to, I will read that later to try to figure it out. So what I will do is I'll go to that, let's say this is James 2, right? So then I go back over here and press on that. Oop, yeah, because it already says outlines. Then I go back to thumbnail. I already know I'm within James and then I try to find the chapter. So kind of a guessing game. But if you have, anybody have any um, suggestions here, please let us know. I may not be able to look at it during this time, but I'll definitely go back to take a look and see and figure it out. An easier way of doing this. This is just my way of doing it for now, since I'm not an expert on this um, app. Oops, I wrote on it. Okay, so I'm just going to go over these again. And so this one is a magnifier. Okay, if you have a favorite, let's say this is going to be a favorite of yours, the thumbnails. And that's how you bookmark it so it becomes one of your favorites. Okay, so that you can easily find this again. So if you go back here, after you close it, And then you go over to favorites. There it is. And you'll see that it's bookmarked as favorites. And this was the one, I think, that I bookmarked earlier. Okay. So let's do that again. So let's say this is one that I want to bookmark. Oh, I know. Because I have to go to thumbnails. Um, it's showing it here that, that you had that picked. And then you just go up here and you bookmark it. That's it. And then you can go to your favorites and then you'll find it in here.
Okay, hope that makes sense, sorry. So then this right here is where you want to go if you want to export it. So you can export this page, you can export all the pages, you can also print it here. Okay, again, you're gonna have to play with this yourself. I'm just gonna show you some basics. And then here, let's say you're on this page and let's say you're at church and your pastor is going over these verses and you want to write a note that will stay within this page or at least a page after it, okay? You can go over here in the plus and you can add a template. You can choose whatever template you want. You can choose black, you can choose cream, you could choose white, and then they have different lines or dots or plain paper. So you just choose it like that and then you apply. So let's just do that. So I chose that one, apply. So it does it right after it because I told it to go right after it. Right here, it says before, after, or at the last page, meaning at the very bottom of the page. Okay, so that's one, one of those that you can use. This right here basically gets rid of what's up at the top. So it gets bigger, a little bit bigger, and it gets cleaner. Press that again, it brings everything back that's up here. Here, let's see what it says. Copy the page, rotate this page, add this page to outline. So let's say I want to rotate this so I can work on it on a horizontal view. All I have to do is go there and then tell it to go that way and it'll rotate it so I can work on it this way, horizontally, okay? So I'm gonna rotate it back. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'm gonna go over these here. So what this is, is let's say that you're writing something here, okay? And let me get that pen. You're writing something there and you want it to where you can see it bigger so that it's easier to write if you need that. You can go here and wherever you put this is where you can write it here so that it's a bigger as you can see so that then you can make it look nicer or easier to use and all of that. so that you're writing in a bigger space, so to speak, and it's just gonna write it there. That way it's easier for you to make it look nice if, if you're concerned with that. I typically don't use that. I'll just press it to get rid of it. What I do like to use, what I do is I just do this. I just make it big like that, and then I just start writing. So let's say I'm gonna make a list So that's how I like to work. I don't like that big thing and then seeing what it looks like. It just doesn't really help me. So there's that icon. This one here is the pen. So what it does is if you press on it, it this will come up. You can choose a fountain pen, you can choose a ball pen, and you can use a brush pen. So let's say you use a brush pen and then you just wanna start writing. As you know, when you press harder, then it'll get thicker, just like a brush pen. You see that? So it really does act like a brush pen. It's by the pressure that you put on here. So isn't that cool? So if you wanna do a heading or what have you, you can do that. Okay, and then here, as you can see, this is an eraser. And if you play with these buttons, if you go to erase the entire stroke, let's say you wrote something, and instead of what you saw me doing, I was doing this, instead of that, you could just do that and it just erases the whole thing. Okay, so you can play with it by turning that on. You can make it so that Let's say that you wrote some text here, right? 
and then you went and highlighted it, which this is the highlighter. Let's say you highlighted that. And then you go, you know what? I don't really want that highlight there. Well, you can do this. That means you're going back to the last command. But I'm going to demonstrate this. So I'll show you. You can go here and go erase highlighter only. Let's say two days later, you go back and you want to erase that. So then you could just do this. And it's just erasing that part of it. Turn that off and it'll erase the whole thing. So play with those. And there's an auto deselect. What that does is once you erase something, as soon as you lift up your pen, it goes to the pen that you were using. So I don't like using those because I don't know. It just confuses me when all of a sudden it disappears and then I got used to picking these it's fast enough for me so I don't mind picking them so again this is the highlighter and you can turn this on I definitely turn this on because instead of being really careful about it you can do that and it'll straighten it for you see how it does that so that it's a nice clean line that one, not quite, because it's still clean, but it went that way. I did it too. See, it just straightens it. So let's see. Let's take those off. And you can choose here the different colors. So here you can use the color for the pen. Let's say you don't want to use that. Here is a bunch of colors. And then you can also choose a custom color in here. And then just press it again and then it'll give you that color. So you can totally use the colors that you want, the shade and all of that. So that's super fun. Cause then you can just use whatever um, you choose. So if I wanna use a uh, gray for any time, let's say, let's find a word here that you wanna highlight. Let's just say you just are highlighting and you like gray. Oops, sorry, that's the pen. Well, let's use the pen. So if you want a gray for whatever you're writing, instead of black, right? And then over here, you want to write the blue underneath it. You can do that. So you can do that with the pen and also the highlighter. Again, play with it. See, that takes kind of a long time, right? So just erase it. It won't erase the text because that is a PDF file. And then, let's see, this here is really cool. This is kind of a fun one. I haven't used it that much, but I just discovered it. And so what you do is you press that and what it will do is I'm using blue here, right? See, you click away from it. It's not going to mark it. It's just taking the menu out. So what you can do is like, let's say that I'm going to make a square. And I do that. It straightens it out. Plus, it fills in the color because I chose that. Snap, um, no, fill color because I chose that. It fills it in a lighter color so you can use it as like a sticky note. Isn't that neat? Okay, it straightens it out plus it does the color. And let's say I'm going to move that here, by the way. You take this lasso tool and you just lasso that and then you could move it. Okay, and so this lasso tool again. So let's say that you started writing notes. Let's just let, write a couple of notes. So then you press this and it'll bring up this menu. And if you say resize, okay, you can use this to resize it. And also if you need to make it, you know, go sideways or what have you, you could resize it that way. 
So that's kind of nice because if you're running out of room and you need to move it, then you can do that and make it smaller. It's going to erase that. Okay, this one right here is to import photos. Yeah, so you would import a photo from there. So if you wanted to add it, you can size it. I mean, I can see using this for journaling. However, I like regular paper and I would like to print my photo and all of that. So I would not use this program for journaling, but there are some who may want to do that. And then here you can take a picture. I'm not going to take a picture, but it brings up the picture so that you can place it in here. Let me go over something that I already have to show you guys that. Let's see. Here we go. I imported this text about a week ago, and then I started doing the verse mapping on it, okay? And because it was a text that it was imported, it wasn't one that I wrote, because if you take this and the T for text, okay? If you take that and you go over here, it will not pick it up. It will not pick it up because it's my writing. But if you go here, see how it made it where you can move it? That's what the text is. It's a text box. So any text that's generated, it will highlight it. Again, it won't do to here because these are my writing. However, if you do press that, let's say you go there, you can start typing and then leave it there. You can take it and move it around. You take the lasso and then you do that. Then you can resize it. Powerful, isn't it? It's a powerful program. I love your idea of printing your good notes pages though. Perfect combination of digital yet still analog. Exactly. And you know too, at least you're still writing, right? Because I like writing. I don't like the typewritten necessarily. So I like seeing the writing. And it's nice that you could write and also type it if you want to for certain things like this that you kind of want to type so that it's, it's more prominent. There's another thing I needed to show you guys. If you go here, you can move that to the trash or export it or add the page to this outline here. So it'll have it, it'll add it down here, I think. So there we go. Again. You'd press that and you can export it or move it to the trash if you don't want it anymore. Okay, so now let me show you how to get a new page. So what I would want to do is I would go up here and the plus sign and I would take this page and bring it in here. So this is the page before it, it's the page after it. Now I want to move it so that it's horizontal. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go here and I'm going to say rotate this page and I'm going to rotate it this way. Okay, so there's my page. And then what I want to do is I want to go online and get the scripture for it. So let's say we want to get James 1.1. So all you have to do really is go in Google and just say James one, one, pick it, and it'll bring up all of these. I usually use the Bible Gateway. That's on the website, and here it is. So then what I do is I take this, and I just copy this. Copy. I go back to this program, press on there, hold it, paste, and there it is, right? So I can move it anywhere on this page that I would like it to go. So let's just say we're gonna put it here in the middle. And now we want to make it bigger or double space it. So you go over here where the lasso tool is, go around it, hold it down, and it'll bring up, resize. You could resize it. 
Okay, then you can go here. You go over to edit so that you can put your cursor there. There you go, now it's double spaced. See that? So then you can now work on that. This is what the whole page looks like right there. So you could make it big, you can make it small. You can do the double double line and all of that. And so that's how I start you doing it and using it for my verse mapping. So I think that is about it. So let me show you a page that I started doing for inductive. I'm gonna go to outlines because it's in Isaiah. I started doing my quiet time reading Isaiah and see, I just started marking it. I'm moving things around easily and it's just so easy to use. Earth is a place, so I double underline that with green. Let's say I want to highlight something. There you go. So this is a really good tool to use for your Bible study and it's pretty powerful. There's a lot to play with. Again, if you go to Crossway, you can get the whole Bible, but it is only an ESV. As an update later on today, I am going to do the verse 4, 7 of Philippians. I am going to map that out with you guys live. So I'm going to come back on 6 o'clock my time, PST. Hopefully you guys can make it. So do you guys have any questions? I hope that I wasn't too confusing. Again, I'm very new at it, but it was just such a powerful tool and something that's so easy to use. And also you can pick different covers, you know. I didn't show you guys that here, but you can pick some covers that's already pre-done. It's within the app. So, and that's what I did with this one here. So again, the difference between these two is that this shows the folder that you're in, it shows what is in that folder when you use this. I'm going to close that. But if you use this, it shows you all your folders. Okay. So in my miscellaneous notes, I have these different folders. Right here, this was done through GoodNotes. So if you go here, you want to choose Notebook. There you go. See, these are the different ones. You could design your own too, if you're ambitious. Ooh, I like that one. Pretty nice. Ooh, ooh, I like that one too. So you just go here and say create. And it creates it for you. And then you can even highlight it, star it. So yeah, there you go. Okay, any questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. So I can go back to the studio, be ready for six o'clock tonight for the verse mapping. I hope that I see you guys over there. Again, we're going to verse map Philippians 4, 7, which is a continuation from last week's 4, 6. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go. If you guys have any questions and if I can answer them, I will try to just DM me. And until next time, keep on documenting life as it happens. Bye-bye.